Welcome to Unit 5, Marking for Teaching and Learning. In this unit, you will understand what the different steps are in the process of marking, and you'll have an opportunity to reflect upon the process of marking in your own subject area. So just as an overview, there are various different people involved in the marking process in HE, and this is in order to enable rigor. So the first person who is involved is the course leader. The course leader's role is to ensure that all of the program is delivered and run effectively and that the processes have been followed according to university procedure with regards to marking they are likely to be organizing who's doing what marking and there can be quite small teams and there can be quite large teams of people depending upon the size of the subject um, uh, the number of participants who are involved in that subject so you can have for example, 250 people on a particular subject. And in that situation, you might have as many as five different lecturers, associate lecturers, senior lecturers who are involved in the delivery of that unit. And so the marking will be spread against across all of those different people. And you are going to have a first marker and a second marker and the first marker's role is to do the the brunt of the work often the first marker is the person who's less experienced and it's their role to consider what grade that person will receive and why so how their how their grade is mapped onto the graduate learning outcome matrix. So if we look at the matrix, if we imagine the matrix as a grid with on the left hand side, all of the different marks going up to a first and at the bottom, we're going to have a, a fail. Then running across them, we've got the graduate learning outcomes and they might also be mapped onto the learning outcomes. Um, sometimes the learning outcomes are mapped directly onto to that grid. But when we're talking about this, we are we're really we're really looking at each of the graduate learning outcomes and considering, okay, so what is it that this person has achieved with regards to an ability to apply theory to practice, working with others, communication skills. There might be some graduate learning outcomes that relate to employability. So there are different graduate learning outcomes and you would score the learner in each of those different areas. And what you would come out with as an average is what, would, what they would expect to receive as a grade. So the first marker's role is to complete the graduate learning outcome matrix to finalise a grade and to write up feedback in relation to what they expect to give that particular learner. And the feedback uh, is often organised as a sandwich. So you start off with something which is, you know, well done. This is a great piece of work. You then move into something that is perhaps a little bit more helpful for development. And then you close by summarising how overall um, you know what what it is overall that they've done well so it's just kind of a nice tight sort of bundle and it's useful to um refer directly to the graduate learning outcome matrix even if you don't use the language of it but just the different elements of it where they've stored well and not quite so well so this is why it's good to have that right in front of you and then you can see what the what you've ticked off oh well they got two two in that they got a third in that they got a first in that they've done very well in that area but not so well in others and where marking can be very tricky is where people are a little bit all over the shop on that matrix so it might be that they get 40 in one area and a 60 in another that's highly unusual but when that sort of thing happens it means that it can feel very uncomfortable as a marker to actually understand exactly what grade to give. And the, and the matrix can be really helpful in, in pinning that down. 
The first marker would then hand that over to the second marker. And if it's blind marked, then the mark would disappear and the matrix would disappear at that point. That would be after the second marker's marked it. And the second marker wouldn't give us detailed a feedback. They wouldn't write up the feedback in the same way as the first marker, but they'd make a few notes, a few hints, and they would read the first marker's um, comments with regards to that. Then the two of them would have a conversation and that might be an online conversation like this, where you might use a Zoom call or you might get on the telephone or it could be face to face, or it might be that you organize this by writing down in the, the, the form exactly what your comments are in relation to what you notice and then the grade and then you have a conversation about the difference. Now, if the difference is three marks, it's likely that you're not gonna be that interested in having a very long conversation. But if the difference is a grade band, then that's obviously something that requires a little bit more thought as to why one person believes it's one grade, another person believes it's another. And it's often the way in which that marking matrix has been interpreted and the way in which they understand what's expected and so that's why often on units, there's a standardization meeting that happens before any marking takes place. And that is really just a conversation around what constitutes what kind of mark. So this is what the first and second mark do. The moderator is somebody who is internal and they look at all of the marks going across, they look at a sample of marks from each of the different first and second markers and they go through. So say for example, there's five different people working on it, then they might then receive a, a percentage, it's normally 10% of, of each of, of those. And then they look at the, of each of those uh, marks and feedback and marking matrices and they then look across those to look at consistency across not just one set of first and second markers but all of the lecturers so they're looking for consistency across the way that people are giving feedback the way that people are marking and that everything's being done correctly and, and as it should be. So they're normally somebody who's quite senior and they're normally somebody who has had quite a bit of time and experience in the university. They're normally a um, senior lecturer or even a course lead and it's their responsibility to make sure that everything's been done as it should. And if at that point they pick up on anything, um, so for example, one set of first and second markers of, of perhaps, you know, been colluding and 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 the you know the actually the marks are not as they'd expect then they can ask for remarking to happen at that point it's not usual but that can happen um especially if there's you know quite high volumes of work so that's the role of the internal moderator the external moderator is somebody who does not exist within the university and they come and they look across an entire program and it's the same idea it's 10 percent from each of the units um, that's collected and then they look at how that works across all of it. So those are the people who are involved in, in the whole marking process and the process itself. So there's the recruitment of participants onto the process. There's a meeting there's a meeting regarding the unit where there's a conversation about what is this unit? What's intended? What is it? What's the learning? What are the learning outcomes that are expected for them to complete? What sort of content? What's involved? What's the structure of it? So all of this gets discussed by staff who are going to be teaching that unit. And then there's a market and standardization meeting as I've said, that's really about making sure that people are on the same page. And then the second marking meeting happens and then there is an evaluation meeting. So this is the kind of process that takes place for lecturers who are going through a marking, a piece of marking within, within a unit. I hope that that's helpful for you. It's really now just about thinking 
about that process if you have any questions if there's anything that you're not sure about if there's anything that you would like to know then please just make a note of those questions and that can be something that we can look at within within the zoom session